Uh, hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video we're going to carry on with part of the Cormac mill head upgrade series and we're going to be making a new quill plate. Why are we doing that? Well the quill plate that we had for my ISO, sorry my ISO, my Morse taper 4 spindle which is this one which came with the machine doesn't fit the ISO 30 spindle and there's not enough wall thickness left to bore that out to make it fit the ISO 30 spindle it'll be too thin when I'm done and as well as that I want to make this new quill plate multifunctional so I can hang some more stuff off it whereas this one is very contoured shape on the OD so it's very round difficult to find a flat edge to mount anything to it so we're going to make something a little bit more prismatic looking and put that onto the new on the bottom of the new quill. Um, what have I not covered? Future options. Yeah, as we go through the shape, I'm going to try and leave some, as I said, some flat spaces on there as part of the sort of prismatic shape, uh, so that we can drill and tap holes in, or you know, create something different to fix onto there at a point in the future. Should I need to do that? So I'm, I'm just trying to think ahead, even though I don't know what those things might be yet. We're going to make this out of a very nice lump of aluminium. It's 150 by 150 millimetres or 6 by 6 inches by 1 inch thick or 25 mil thick, which is a bit too thick, but I'm going to keep it at that thickness. doesn't really matter. It's it's a little bit too thick and it's not quite big enough in in the sort of rectilinear shape, or, but I will be able to get what I need out of it. This was, I've been scouring eBay for long enough waiting for an off cut to come along of roughly the right dimensions. Put a bid on this, got it for fairly cheap money and that's been sitting in here for a while. So that's what we're going to use. So I'm just going to create a bit of a drawing and then we'll batter on with the manufacture. Okay, my first job on this, I've got two nice stock edges and I've got two saw cut edges where this has been sawn out or something. So first job, I'm just going to square it up and we're just going to take a light skim off the saw cut face, whip it round and light skim off the other saw cut face. So I've got four nice presentable edges, not too worried about size. Using my best square and we're just going to tap that into square. Obviously that was my dry sense of humour. I really do need to do something about this. <laughs> it is square, it just looks awful. Right, we're going to get set up and give that a skim. Okay, we've got our block all squared up now. So next job is we're gonna we've got a couple of one, two, three blocks on the bed. We're gonna sit our block on there, pretty much up against the two studs, not touching no, but just to get me positioned right for the clamping. And then I'm just gonna drop a couple of clamps on. Finger tight. The next job we're going to bring our clock in and clock front face or side face, doesn't matter, we'll clock the front face. And then we're going to, we've got one hole to drill in position, small hole, and we're going to mark our centre position for the big bore that's going to go in the middle. That's all we're doing. At this operation so I'll bring you back when we've got the clock in and we're squaring up. Okay so we've got our clock on the spindle so we're just going to wind in onto the part set a zero and then we'll see what it looks like. I've just thrown this on just lining it up by eye really with the 
T slots. This is millimetres. So we're about 0 0.2, 28, 26, 28 millimetres, something like that. So bring that back to about 0.15. Re-zero out. Okay, we've centered out using our edge finder. You've seen me touch on the edge and wound in. We've set our zero datum on this hole. So I'm going to center drill, unusually for me, rather than spot drill, because I want a center drill in for the center hole, which we'll do next Okay, we're going to get our plate set up in the four jaw, which fortunately is still on the machine. So I've got the jaws, not even anywhere near really. But I've got them all the right way around at least. So we're just going to drop our plate in, bring the centre somewhere near, and I'm going to make sure all my jaws are. somewhere near so that we're locating on the back faces of the jaws looks pretty good make sure there's plenty of movement in them and then we're just going to wind that centre in somewhere like that and then I'm just going to use some packers so that we don't mark up the part some bits of aluminium And now I'm going to put another centre in between the dead centre and the part. We'll put a clock on it and we'll clock that in until we're reading zero all the way around. I'll bring you back when we're doing that. Okay, we've put our other centre in so you can see how that's, that's spinning now. Just going to bring our DTI in, find our high point which is there. For the zero fanatics, we'll put that on zero. So we're about five thou out just by setting it up with the tail stop. So what we'll do now is bring that into true. That's within five tenths of a thou. For what we're doing here, more than good enough. Okay, I've managed to lose some footage, so apologies for that. We've ditched the trepanning idea for a couple of reasons. One, I can't find my trepanning tool, and second, secondly, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to grind another one just for this. 
and yeah, it's just a quick job and I didn't pay much for this plate so we're just going to lose the material and bore this out and I'd also centre drilled about 7 or 8 mil deep in a 25 mil thick plate already anyway so it was limited what I could use the central slug for so I'm just going to lose the material on this occasion so what you've missed is from a centre drilled hole I went straight through with this which is a 14 mil drill like that I'm sure you know what a drill going through material looks like we followed that with this one which is a 30 mil drill and now we're bringing in the boring bar to bring this out to 96.25 millimeters so I'll show you a bit of that There we go, that's got our bore to finish size, so I'm just going to chamfer front side and then we'll take it out of the fore jaw at this point, that's it for the lathe and we'll carry on with the mill, we'll do a trial fit on the base of the spindle before we do any more, but that should fit nice and snug. Okay, we've got our got our partly bird on both corners, and we're just going to give this a quick trial fit, but it should fit okay based on the measurements I've taken. Just make sure there's nothing ugly on here. Yeah, perfect. Just a bit of slop, not a lot, probably about a thou, if that. Okay, so that's got the basis of our quill plate done. So the next job now is I'm going to blue one face up. I'm going to mark, do quite a bit of marking out. I'll do most of that off camera, it's just measuring, scribing and then I'll bring you back when we're setting back up on the mill to do some of the material wastage on the corners the slotting and the drilling 
for the clamp bolt at the back. Okay, I'm just getting my next setup ready for machining the block and this I think is probably going to be one of the easiest ways of doing the setups because I've got about five or six setups to do where I need the block clamped properly and the vise is not deep enough so this is a nice way of clamping and gives me some options around so I've got to set it at 45 degrees a few times and and at 90 degrees so this is good so we've got our cube up and we're just going to try and clock that in so I'm just going to I've lined it up just by eye with the T-slots and we've got a couple of clamps inside just nipped so I'll bring you in on the clock and we'll get this clocked in Let me try and zoom in. I've got my usual issue of the clock blowing out with the light. There we go. Okay, let's see what we've got. So we're plus 0 0.12 at this end. I'll take that as a win. You don't often get it out that right first time. Okay, this has been designed with 45 degree cutouts on the corners. So I've got my 45 degree square, you can see that, and we're just basically setting this up against the against the cube at the back, up oh, underneath the part, resting the part on that, and we're just gonna nip up at that. And you can see now why using the cube was an easy setup because I've got to do this four times on four different corners plus the other ones. It's dead easy. Everything's the same setup. All I've got to do is knock it round and sit it on my 45 degree square. There we go, that's got our first angle done, so this is starting to look quite prismatic now. 
which is what I that's kind of what I wanted with lots of flat faces for attaching things to. So what I'm gonna do now is flip it round 90 degrees and do the same on this corner down here. Not film that because it's the same as what I've just done. And then I'll bring you back when we're on to the next piece, which will be the bottom two corners next. Now what I might do, there's quite a big chunk of aluminium on this corner. I might whip those two corners through the bandsaw before we mill it, just so that we save a little bit of stop from this, at least. But I'll not film that if I do. I'll bring you back when we're setting up to finish these other two corners. Okay, we're just getting set up for our next operation now, which is to drill a 6mm clearance hole all the way through here. So, just give that a tap down. That end fits better. So I'll bring you back in a minute. I'm just going to get set up with my edge finder to the right position. I'll not show that. And then I'll bring you back when we're putting a hole in here. Okay, excuse the noise, we've got our heater on, it's winter's here, so apologies for the background noise. We're on our last setup for this side now, and we're going to put the slot through here, which is going to give us the expansion and contract contraction to clamp around the spindle. The existing one has a 4.5mm slot through it, ideally, because I know this is such a close fit I'd be putting a slitting saw through here with a millimeter or something similar that's one thing I don't really have any of in the workshop yet is slitting saws so we're going to put something very similar in here I've got a five millimeter end mill and we're just going to do very similar to this and put a decent size slot through there it will not matter for what this is that will be absolutely fine so I'll bring you back in a moment and we'll crack on and put this slot through the danger with this type of operation is this could, when I break through, nip in on the cutter, but the way we've got this clamped, as opposed to having it in a vise, should prevent that happening because I'm gripping both sides up against the cube, so it should all stay nice and secure, he says.
Okay, you might ask and you might say, why did you use a cube for this, John, and not an angle plate? Because everything you've done so far, you could have done on an angle plate, and you're absolutely right, I could. Basic answer to that is, don't have an angle plate the right size for this. This cube was perfect size for this size part, didn't involve me needing to put any parallels in, anything like that. And the very final operation on this part, I get a bonus. So I've got a counter bore or miller slot in here so that I can drop this nut down below surface. And because this cube is all square, I've got a couple of one, two, three blocks up against each other. I'm just gonna push the part up against those. You can probably only see my arm, so apologies, but I'm basically using them as a, a depth stop in that configuration, just to put the part up to, so that when I mill my slot in here, it's notionally square to the rest of the part. It really doesn't matter, but from an aesthetics point of view and doing the job right, I know that that part is now squared up to every every other feature on it. So I'll get an end mill set up and we'll come back and we'll just mill this final bit of clearance in for that knot. Okay, so off camera I've made, well made, I've cut a piece of studding, I've loctited a nut onto one end, I don't have any cap head, socket cap head screws long enough for this, piece of studding's fine. So we, we basically damaged the thread at this end with a centre punch in three places, loctite and then wound the nut onto the damaged area so that's not coming off anytime soon. And then on the other end, washer, spring washer, and we've refitted our, what was the depth stop for this machine with the original nut in the bottom in the recess that we've cut. So now it's the moment of truth. Does it all fit? Let's find out. a good fit. That's a really good fit. I don't want it right butted up against the, the top. I want it just slightly down. solid. So that's our, that's our quill plate on and we've got our rod going up the spindle into the head which we're going to use as maybe our depth stop yet to be defined but certainly for my next task on this machine which will be my quill DRO install. 
and also my coolant misting device which will be going either on this side or on this side I don't know yet till I've plumbed my pipe work in so that's one of the next things and again like I said that's why this has been made such a prismatic shape so I've got some nice flat faces around about once I know what I want to use this for I was thinking about drilling holes in with some little thumb screws or whatever for putting a DTI in for clocking the vise maybe don't know I don't know how, how useful that would be in, in reality but I've got options now so I've got this quill plate there are many many things I can fit to this add to this maybe a ring light at some point I don't know but I've got the bulk of the work done so we've now got our quill plate on so I'm happy with that with all that being said I'll bring you back to the board and we'll close this episode out well there we go guys that gets us to the end of this episode so another improvement to the Cormac milling machine and needed obviously because when I switched my spindles over I lost the use of the existing quill plate so happy with that I've enjoyed that job um, first real job in here where I've been able to use bigger tooling a big boring bar big drills since I've set the machine shop up so I know it was only aluminium but it's been good to get tore into a bigger lump of stock and make something fairly half decent out of it so pleased with that as I said future expandability to make that quill plate into whatever I want to do for the machine so I hope you've all enjoyed watching that and thank you to the subscribers and the new subscribers that have come along and we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else.